Okay, so let's take a look at how the forwards power works. You can see Barrett here as 6,000. What it means is that it has 6,000 attack and 6,000 defense. Both work separately. For instance, if Barrett takes 4,000 damage, his defense will be down to 2,000, but his attack will still be 6,000. If I choose to attack Kageyama-san with Barrett, like so, he has two choices. He can either choose not to block at all and take one point damage, flip a card and put it in the damage zone, or choose to block. So, what would you like to do? Okay, I just broke and this okay. one. So, it. as you can see, he just blocked with his Samurai. Both cards are of equal power, 6 down each, so both are going to be defeated and put in the break zone. But, in this particular situation, I have a backup which is really interesting here. As we said, some of the backups have abilities too, and this one gives each earth forward I control plus 1000. This means my Barret here is 7000, so if Kageyama-san blocks me with his Samurai, he actually loses, but Barret is still alive and still has 1000 defense left until the end of the turn. Backups are not the only ones with abilities, some forwards have abilities too. We're gonna go through the most popular ones. Haste, for instance. Haste allows you to attack the turn where you play a forward, so it's quite useful. For instance, I can discard a fire backup, it gives me two fire crystal points, I can play Tifa, and since she has haste, I can attack straight away and inflict one point damage. Take it. If you want to be very aggressive, that's the way to go. Okay, another ability is called First Strike. Let's take Red 13, for instance. So I have Red 13 and Kageyama-san has a forward called Delita. <laughs> Both forwards are 5,000. So in theory, if I were to attack Kageyama-san okay. Okay. and block, both cards should be defeated and go in the break zone. But since Red 13 has first strike, what it does is that it inflicts the damage first. So in this case, I deal 5,000 damage first. It doesn't have the time to hit back and is defeated. This is first strike. The third ability, which is very useful as well, is called Brave. What Brave does is that normally when you attack with a forward, you have to dull it. Meaning, at the next turn, I won't be able to block with that forward. Well, if it has Brave, I can attack without dulling. So, I take it. Kageyama-san takes one point damage, and at his turn, yep. if he chooses to attack me, attack. I can block with my Samurai. Now we're gonna take a look at a player's turn. It's always made up of the same series of steps called phases. Let's take a look at this. So the first phase is called the active phase. And what it is essentially is that any card that was in a dull state, you can put back in active mode, like so. Once the active phase is finished, comes the draw phase, and you're gonna draw two cards. Then we're gonna begin main phase one. And main phase one is a phase during which you can play characters or use special abilities. For instance, I can choose to discard one Tifa here, which is gonna give me two fire crystal points and play a backup in dull state. Once my main phase one is finished, we move on to the attack phase. And I can choose to attack with any of the forwards I have in play. For instance, I'm gonna attack Kageyama-san with Tifa. Okay, I broke it. So he chose to block with his forward, but he only has 5,000 power. So his forward is destroyed and sent to the break zone. Once the attack phase is finished, I could choose to attack with Samurai and Cloud, of course. Each conflict is resolved individually. Once all the attack phase is finished, we move on to main phase 2. And main phase 2 is the exact same thing as main phase 1. You can choose to play characters or use special abilities, but it's a good phase because you can save your assets for after the attacks have happened. Once main phase 2 is finished, we move on to the end phase, and it's Kageyama-san's turn, and we're gonna go through the same exact steps all over again. Let's see. Yes. Active phase, draw phase, then main phase 1 is generating two earth crystals by dulling the backups and playing Barret. Then we can move on to attack phase and resolve the conflicts, then second main phase, I have no idea, so it's your turn, but... Oh, I can see, yes. Six cards. Six cards, that's not good. At the end of the turn, you can only have five cards in your hand. If you have more than that, you have to discard until there are only five cards left. And that is essentially a full player turn. 
Okay, so we've just seen how a full player turn goes with the different phases. The cool thing is that there are actually a lot of moments where your opponent can interrupt your actions. We're just going to show you a few examples. So this is Kageyama-san's turn and he's going to play a forward. So that's Barret. You see, he's dulling three back ups, so that gives him three earth crystals and he can play Barret. I finished May phase one, I can move to attack phase. So yeah, we're supposed to move to Kageyama-san's attack phase, but before he does that, I can actually cast a summon. And I'm gonna dull my three fire backups to give me three fire crystals, and I'm gonna cast Brynhilde. On Barret, dealing 7000 damage, and Barret is sent to the break zone. This is still Kageyama-san's turn, and now he can move to attack phase. Okay, attack it. And attack with Vincent. Another example is, say this is still Kageyama-san's turn and we are at the beginning of attack phase and he's gonna attack me Okay, I attack with Vincent I can counter and dull my three fire backups and use Brynhilde to defend myself on Vincent and then he doesn't deal any damage and he doesn't kill Red 13 either These are one of the few examples of counter moves and how you can interrupt your opponent's action as you've seen in previous videos, there are a lot of times where your opponent can interrupt your actions, but that doesn't mean you can't fight back. And when you do so and play an ability in turn, it generates the stack. And what the stack is, is a pile of abilities which is going to resolve from top to bottom, which is from the last card played to the first card played. And depending on the order of these cards, the outcome can be very different. Let us give you a quick example. So. Kageyama-san is in his main phase and he's going to play Golem, which gives Barret yes. plus 2000. So I'm going to discard one Black Mage, giving me two Fire Crystals, and I'm going to dull a backup, giving me an extra, so three Fire Crystals, to play Brynhildir. And this is your stack here. So from top to bottom, Brynhildir is going to occur First, dealing 7000 damage to Barret before Golem applies, so Barret dies. Another situation is Kageyama-san has played Barret and he just finished his main phase. Okay, I finished my main phase. Okay, so before we move to attack phase, I can interrupt or play an ability, which I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing, discard a backup, two fire crystals, three fire crystals, and play Brynhildir on Barret. So technically, he should die, but Kageyama-san can counter, pay one Fire Crystal by dulling his backup and use Golem. And you can see this time the stack is inverted. Golem applies first, giving Barret 2000, so making him 9000, and only then Brynhildir deals 7000 damage, which is no longer enough to kill Barret. So it is sent to the break zone, and Barret is still alive. That is the stack. Okay, so it's time to tell you about a very cool feature of the game called EX Burst. So, as we've explained previously, when you take one point damage, you have to flip a card over and put it in the damage zone. Let's see what's going on if that card happens to be an EX. We're during Kageyama-san's attack phase, and he's gonna attack me with Barret. Unfortunately, I already attacked during my turn with Red 13, it is now in a dull state, meaning I can't block with it. I don't have any summons to counter either, so I have to take one point damage. I flip a card over, and ho ho, surprise, it's an EX Burst. And what it does is, the ability of the card triggers instantly, I don't have to pay any cost for it, and the best thing is that it can't be blocked. So yes, I take one point damage, but at the same time, Barret is sent to the break zone because I just dealt 7000 damage to it. So you see, EX Burst is a very cool way to reverse the odds during the game.